Welcome, this is David the Real Mad White, and today is a very special day. Today is the Sunday of St. Gregory Palamas, the second week of Lent. Yes, this is a very special day because today, this is the day of this man here. You see, do you, do you, can you read this? Gregorius. Oh, let me let me try to get close to that. You see the Palamas there. I know Greek is kind of hard to hard to read, but once you kind of have an idea, you can get it. This man is very special. We have a week, a Sunday of Lent dedicated to him and to him alone. Now, of course, there's also other <laughs> saints in that day as well, but this week is mainly dedicated to him. And I want to start with saying that he is, and if you're a Roman Catholic, he is our common father, whether you like it or not. So this is this is ecumenism of return. The real met right here. Ecumenism of return is based, by the way. Uh, it's what Father Florowski does. But uh, what I was going to talk about is that he is a common father. This man, again, this man, this holy divine man, no matter what you want to call him, if you want to call him a devil, if you want to call him Satan's mouthpiece, I don't care. If you're a Roman Catholic, even if you're a set of a contest, by the way, because Unitism is nothing new, he is your saint, whether you like it or not. But you might ask, well, what's your idea? Well, I have two ideas. Pope John Paul, who's also a saint in the Roman communion. Tradcasts don't like it, but he's a saint in their communion. He says, hesychasm is beautiful and he venerated Gregory Palamas Saint Gregory Palamas and referred to him as a saint and his teachings as wise so are you going to go against your own saint give me a break and more concretely if you watch my Eastern Catholicism refute to Rome video he is a saint in the Eastern Catholic communion and and if you don't believe me uh, go to Eastern just go on Google type Eastern Catholic major feasts calendar go to second week of lent what are you gonna find what do you think you're gonna find you're gonna find the sunday of saint gregory palamas why because we use the same calendar because the byzantine rites includes the byzantine calendar oh i didn't know that that's such an esoteric knowledge dude but no one literally no one knows these things these are supposed to be like the very basic like baby level stuff but most tradcasts you ask them about the liturgical calendar like what's a liturgical calendar dude what, what, what the heck <laughs> they don't know these things but what I want to talk about is the term palamism right so we talked about St. Gregory Palamas and how he's a common father and if Roman Catholics really want unity if they really care about unity really they should just accept I mean, they already do, but they should acknowledge him as a saint in their own communion. Just say Saint Gregory Palamas. Don't just say Gregory Palamas. Call him Saint Gregory Palamas. Go to Catholic saint websites. You'll find Saint Gregory Palamas right there. You'll see him right there. There's no need to hide. There's no need to. There's no need to insult him. He's your saint. Accept it, right? I know you're grieving, but you should accept it. But what I want to talk about is this term palamism right we see this often oh you talk about you think the essence and energies you think they're distinct oh that that's palamism bro um this term really signifies two things to me number one the one thing it signifies is that it shows an attempt of someone that tries to categorize a set of beliefs which is okay but you could just say orthodoxy that categorizes the set of beliefs perfectly and number two it signifies to me that you're stupid. You are stupid if you use this term regularly and you think that it's a valid term that you can use. You are you are an idiot. Simple as that. I'm sorry. I don't make the rules. God makes the rules and God says you are an idiot. Why are you an idiot if you use the term palimism? Well, because we don't have in orthodoxy this understanding of different distinct contradictory traditions within one umbrella we're not like islam we're not like judaism and we are not like roman catholicism i don't know why i listed these two religions in my eyes they're the same thing anyway but we don't have these different like thomism or uh, scotism right augustinianism we don't have these different schools different traditions 
We don't believe, we don't have that stuff. We don't have these schools and traditions like Islam has, Hanafi, Ibadi, Shafi, Imam, Naqshbani. I don't care. We don't have that stuff. We don't need that stuff. There's only one tradition because there's only one truth. There's only one belief. Multiplicity of traditions, guess what? Multiplicity of beliefs, perennialism. That's perennialism in a single religion. So we don't have that. And what's also really stupid about that term is St. Gregor Palamas doesn't say anything new. He quotes from the Bible. He quotes from his his terminology, his argument, his, his belief on energies. You can see it on St. Vasil the Great. St. Vasil the Great. Let me show let me show you another icon. Let me, oops. <laughs> Let me flex you my icon collection, okay? Do you see the three holy hierarchs? The three holy hierarchs? St. Gregory the Theologian, Essence Angie's Distinction. St. John Chrysostom, well, Essence Angie's Distinction, question mark? Probably. I think I mentioned that in the basics of Essence Angie's introduction video. St. Vasil the Great, Essence Angels Distinction? Yes, read letter 234. So, at least two of these people in this icon, out of three, have openly professed a belief in the Essence Angels Distinction. And I probably St. John Chrysostom does the same. But I'm not 100% sure, so I won't say that. But, so, all he's doing is, is he's repeating what those people are saying. He's repeating what St. Gregory of Nyssa is saying. He's repeating what St. John of Damascus said. Read, ex read the exposition on the Orthodox faith. The whole book is about this and St. John's distinction. Give me a break, dude. Give me a break. He has books dedicated. St. John of Damascus, priest schism saint, dedicated to St. John's distinction. But somehow, Palamism is the name you get, even though, literally, even anti calcadonian saints, by the way, uh, you can read Severus of Antioch. He believes in the St. John's distinction. He believes they're distinct too. And many, we have, I mean, the Chalcedonia Church has critiqued Severus's position on various different issues. The one thing they didn't critique him on is the doctrine of energies. Roman Catholics, ask yourselves that. Why? Why? Did Palamism exist in the Priestism Church? Sometimes doctrines like Nestorianism predates Nestorius, right? But is Palamism so powerful that it predates like 10 centuries before? And give me a break. Honestly, this really signifies to me ignorance. It signifies to me ignorance. And we should not use the term Palamism. Just use the term Orthodox theology. And it's not a tradition. It's not an optional school of thought. It's dogmatic. The fact that we have the Sunday of St. Gregory of Palamas where we celebrate the Hesychas Synod, right? shows that the Hesychas Synod is dogmatic. And this also disproves the Roman Catholics that say, Oh, the Orthodox, they, they don't have the Pope. They can't signify any new dogmas. Well, guess what, retard? The Hesychas Synods, those are post-schism. Those are dogmatic. Those are ecumenical councils. Exactly. So we don't need a Pope to have dogmas, to have new dogmas. Idiot. Sorry if I'm using insults too often, but I'm hearing this so often that it's at this stage, it's, it's, it's up here at this stage, it's up here. Like I'm getting really frustrated. It's really frustrating when you read all of this stuff and you're in the faith, you go to church every, like every week at the very least, you do your research, you look into your faith and then some blathering idiot says, oh, Palamism, Palamism, or like Wikipedia articles, you see Palamism. And you can't get, you can't have any other reaction other than frustration. So it's not a term that we Orthodox should be using. It's not a valid term. Maybe it could apply to Roman Catholics, right? I mean, at this, at this stage, Palamism is an optional theological way for them. So maybe it, it could be for them. But for us, there's only one tradition and that is the Christian tradition. And that's the only tradition we adhere to. So no Palamism. Say no to Palamism. Say no to Palamism, but say yes to St. Gregory Palamas, who's not only a great theologian, but also a great spiritual teacher, whose hesychasm, by the way, is not an innovation. It's based on 
Old Testament teachings, New Testament teachings, ascetic teachings. So if hesychasm is new, guess what? Everything in the Bible doesn't apply. What does Paul say? Pray ceaselessly. Pray without ceasing. St. Gregory of Palamas is just repeating them. Have you read St. Gregory? Of course they haven't read St. Gregory of Palamas. Um, have you read arguments against St. Gregory of Palamas? Yes, I'm, I'm going to finish this with this. And this is really frustrating. This is something I'm not even going to like counter-argue. This is going to be a different way of argumentation. I've seen like a Catholic blog against Palamism. Yes, that's in Synergy's distinction. And one thing I noticed about their article, I'm not even gonna, even gonna link it here. It's it's trash. The only use of that article is if I print it out and use it as a toilet paper. That's the only use of that article. I'm not kidding. It argues against Saint Gregory Palms, which okay, you can do it. Okay, you might have something this some disagreements, but he the guy cites Maimonides. Um, you know, I did say Jews and. Roman Catholics and Muslims are kind of the same team, but come on, not make it so obvious. He cites Maimonides multiple times. So at this stage, you have to think, right? Essence and Jesus distinction. Again, go back to my introduction to Essence and Jesus distinction video. It's preached by Saint Vasil the Great. Again, do I have to pull out the same icon over and over again so you can understand? The icon of the three holy hierarchs, at least two of them, at least two. One of them is the theologian. Do you know how many people has a rank the theologian? Go on Google, you'll find it. I'll tell you, less than 10, less than 5. I think only 3, right? And then, St. Vasil the Great, letter 234. So you have two, whole, two of the three holy hierarchs. And originally it's going to be St. Gregory of Nyssa, by the way. Originally it was going to be St. Gregory of Nyssa, who also believes in the St. distinction, by the way. So, if they are wrong, if St. John of Damascus is wrong, if St. Kirill of Alexandria is wrong, St. Kirill of Alexandria, look at the thesaurus, he says, essence and energy are not the same. So he says they're distinct. If these Christian fathers are all wrong, if St. Saint, uh, Saint Maximus the Confessor, if he is wrong, these ecumenical councils that preach essence and justice, if they are all wrong, but it was Maimonides that was right, then you're not Christian. You are a Jew. Go to a synagogue instead and stop pretending to be a Christian then. If, if you're going to oppose the Christian, the consensus of the fathers, and instead you're going to side with a literal Jew, most of the time the people that cite these articles themselves are anti-Jew pe people, but yet... They're so happy citing Jews all the time. Isn't, it, isn't that funny? So go go to a synagogue and stop pretending to, to be a Christian then. Because you're not a Christian. Because essence, energy's distinction is biblical. It's in the Old Testament. Wisdom of Solomon. Check that out. It's in the New Testament. St. Paul used the word energeia multiple times. But no, it was my He's right. Maimonides, he's the one that's right. Uh, you know, all of these guys, they don't matter. Well, then stop being a Christian. Stop pretending to be a Christian. You're not Christian. You can't stop being a Christian. But stop pretending to be a Christian. Or, alternatively, what you can do, which is the best option, is repent. And accept the teachings of the Orthodox faith and become part of the Orthodox Church. That's the only option you have. So take that option. So, Lesson. What's the lesson we are supposed to be learning from the Sunday of St. Gregory of Well, again, this legendary divine man. Yes, divine man. You might say, divine? What are you? you you're like, you're like, you're like this like crazy, crazy universalist, perennialist. No, actually, uh, saint refers to them being divine. They Saints are literally divine by grace. That's what theosis is. So, fun fact that you might have learned, read old writings of saints they refer to saints as divines ask yourself why because they are divine so this divine legendary man this man is legendary and not only is he an orthodox father he's also a catholic father he's not only orthodox but he's also catholic but he's not roman catholic 
But the Roman Catholic wants him to be Catholic. And that's why he is considered as a saint. So let's treat him as a common father. And I believe if we are to make proper dialogue with Roman Catholics, both sides have to acknowledge that St. Gregory Palamas, amongst many other Eastern fathers, are common fathers. And unless we understand this, no dialogue is really going to be working out. Because this old Roman Catholic system of Latin, Latinist, Augustinian, Thomist-based theology doesn't exist. Doesn't exist anymore. I'm sorry, but it's just an available option today. Out of multiple different options, it's just available options that you can pick and choose if you want. If you choose Palamism, you can still be in communion. Look at the Eastern Catholics. And for the Orthodox, it is important to us not only to understand the spiritual teachings, but also the theological te teachings of St. Gregor Palamas. Thank you all for watching. See you guys in the next Hot Peace video. God bless you all. Mwah.